Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. The National Hockey League has been home to many players of colour over the years, albeit them clearly in the minority. The likes of Seth Jones, Wayne Simmons, and P.K. Subban have made names for themselves as stars in the league, whilst the likes of Grant Furr and Jerome Aginla have gone down as some of the greatest players to have ever played the game. As crazy as it might sound today, there was once a time when there were no black players or players of colour in the National Hockey League, when even the thought of a player of colour joining the league was considered ridiculous due to the vastly different, and very clearly outdated, social and political landscape at the time. However, one player found a way to break the league's colour barrier, and in doing so, inspired many hockey players of the future. This is the story of Willie O'Ree, the first black hockey player in the NHL. In order to tell this incredible tale, allow me to take you back to January of 1958. Willie O'Ree, a 22-year-old left winger, in his second year of minor league hockey with the Quebec Aces, was called up to join the Boston Bruins roster on an emergency basis due to Bruins winger Leo Labine going down with the flu. Though he was getting the opportunity to suit up in the best league in the world, O'Ree really shouldn't have been allowed to play, as he was almost completely blind in his right eye thanks to him taking a puck to the face in a minor league hockey game two years earlier, which also happened to break his nose and his cheek in the process. And this is why you wear helmets and visors, kids. O'Ree decided that it was in his best interests to keep this information to himself, and so was able to join the Bruins roster for their upcoming game. On January 18th, 1958, Willie O'Ree put on the Bruins jersey, stepped out onto the ice, and made his debut in the National Hockey League, as the Boston Bruins took on their original six rival, the Montreal Canadiens, at the Montreal Forum. In doing so, O'Ree broke the league's colour barrier, as he became the first black player to suit up in an NHL game. O'Ree would play on a line with right-wing Jerry Topazzini and centre Don McKenney in a weekend home-and-home -home series against the Habs, but went scoreless in those two games before being sent back down to the Quebec Aces for the remainder of the season. Though he may not have scored a goal or put up any points, the Canadian winger certainly didn't look out of place. With a lot of hard work and a little bit of patience, O'Ree would soon get another opportunity to play in hockey's greatest league. After his brief debut and subsequent demotion, O'Ree would be invited to join the Bruins once again for their training camp the following season, but his tenure wouldn't last long, as he would be sent back down soon after. The winger would then spend the next few years in the minors, until the big bad Bruins came calling once again. In December of 1960, the Bruins were in need of O'Ree's services once again, so they brought the minor league forward back up for another stint with the team. The 25-year-old winger was clearly able to keep up with the game at its highest level, as he went on to play 43 games with the Bruins that season, scoring 4 goals and 10 assists, including the game winner on New Year's Day 1961 in Boston Garden against the Montreal Canadiens. However, though Boston's players would have his back, and Bruins fans would welcome him with standing ovations, O'Ree faced his fair share of abuse during his time in the NHL. Though he claims to have had no real problems during his debut game in Montreal, and that the Canadian fans in Montreal and Toronto were a lot more accepting than those south of the border, his second stint with the Bruins saw fans spit at him and yell such phrases as go back to the south and how come you're not picking cotton. Wow. 
these taunts wouldn't phase Ori for the most part. But when the abuse came on the ice, Ori knew he couldn't back down. In a game against Chicago, one of the Blackhawks players racially taunted Ori during the pre-game warm-up. Ironic considering his team's name, but anyway. This culminated with the antagonizer butt-ending Ori in the mouth with his stick, breaking Ori's nose, knocking out two teeth, and splitting his lip early in the game. The 25-year-old wasn't about to let this go unpunished, so he clubbed the player over the head with his stick and cut him so bad it required 15 stitches to fix. Ori was then forced back into the Bruins dressing room and sat out the rest of the game, more so for his safety than anything else. Ori would be sent back down to the minors by season's end, and though he was ready to work his way back onto the Bruins roster for the following season, it wasn't meant to be, as Ori was traded to the Montreal Canadiens that summer. In fact, this trade would signal the end of his NHL career, as Ori would be promptly sent down to the Los Angeles Blades of the Western Hockey League and would spend the next 14 seasons in the minor leagues, predominantly with the Blades and the San Diego Gulls, before retiring in 1967. His career in the NHL may not have lasted long, but the legacy his career created, and his work post-career, have been invaluable. Following a stint in the NHL, there wouldn't be another black player in the league, until Mike Marson was drafted by the Washington Capitals in 1974. This breaking of the colour barrier, as well as the changing opinions and acceptances of society, would lead to more and more black hockey players getting their chance to show what they've got at the NHL level. And we are now at a point in the league's history where it isn't uncommon to see at least one or multiple players of colour on an NHL roster. Not because they have to be there to fill some kind of quota, but because they've earned their spot just like everybody else. Also, despite the recent controversy surrounding Bill Peters, inclusivity has become a big focus for the league. As the league has been running its Hockey is for Everyone campaign for years now, players are required to enrol in a diversity training seminar during the preseason, and racially verbal abuse is punishable by fines and even suspensions. For Ori personally, he would step away from hockey and work in security following his retirement. Until 1998, when he was hired by the NHL as the Director of Youth Development and as an ambassador for NHL diversity, going to schools and hockey teams across the country to promote messages of inclusion, dedication, and confidence. His historic debut, his success in the league despite the trials he faced, and his continued work post-career has helped Ori earn his fair share of awards and recognition, such as the Lester Patrick Trophy, for outstanding services to hockey in the US in 2003, an Order of Canada as a pioneer of hockey in 2008, and has culminated with Ori being inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2018, as a builder of both inclusion in the sport and growing the game as a whole. He has also had a banner raised by the AHL Springfield Thunderbirds, for his time with the city's prior team, the Springfield Indians, and has had his jersey retired by the San Diego Gulls. He may not have realised it at the time, but when he first put on the Bruins jersey and took to the ice that night in January of 1958, Willie O'Ree not only became the first black NHL player, he changed the league forever. And with that, I'm going to end today's video. What do you guys think about Willie O'Ree's debut and NHL career? Should he have played in the league for longer? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. 
Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Martin Tolness, Max Artis, Nat Marlowe, and Paul Malia, as well as a huge thank you to The Legacy for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.